$1,850. That is the average price that you're looking at spending on a brand new MacBook in 2025. And if you max out all the specs, well, you're spending over three grand easily. And let's be real here. Most of us don't just have this money laying around to throw on a brand new MacBook every couple of years. That's why I'm proud to say that I'm still rocking my 2020 M1 MacBook Air four years in and it still runs smooth, but it's only lasted this long because I've treated it right. So today we're going to be going over the most common mistakes that the average MacBook user does and how to avoid them. So sit back, relax, and take some notes as I increase the longevity of your MacBook. Let's get straight into it. Mistake number one is going to be suffocating your MacBook. You know that comfy lazing around spot on your bed, under the blankets, with your MacBook on top of your blankets? Yeah, it's low-key killing your Mac. Let me explain. MacBooks are designed with airflow in mind. Even the fanless ones, like my 2020 M1 MacBook Air, are designed using passive cooling. If you block that airflow, you run the risk of your Mac getting extremely hot. And you may be wondering, well, how is a hard surface good for your Mac, but a soft surface isn't? Well, a soft surface like your couch, your bed, or even a blanket wraps around the sides of your MacBook, trapping heat and blocking the natural airflow that helps keep your MacBook cool. And that heat, it gets pushed straight back into your Mac, frying your battery and blocking the internal components from working properly. A hard surface, however, keeps some space at the bottom of the Mac, letting the heat radiate outwards. Even something like a cheap laptop stand honestly makes a huge difference. So I suggest that you guys give your MacBook a little bit of breathing room. Trust me, a little bit goes a long way. Mistake number two is going to be leaving your MacBook plugged in 24-7. Now I know this is tempting to do, especially for those of you guys that use your MacBook like a desktop, but leaving it plugged in to 100% 24-7, it's slowly cooking your battery health. So MacBooks use lithium ion batteries, which age a lot faster when kept charging 24-7. And while Apple's optimized battery charging helps, it's definitely not magic. What I try to do is I let mine get down to 30 or 40% and then I leave it charging till about 85 to 95%, never to 100. And I also don't leave it plugged in overnight unless I have like a long export or a huge update to do, which is like once in a blue moon anyways. So this charging habit alone will help extend your battery lifespan for years, seriously. Mistake number three is going to be skipping updates. So I know Apple's update prompts are really annoying. I bet most of you guys just open it, look at it, close it, and just leave it. But this is another thing that is slowly killing your MacBook. A lot of the time, these updates aren't like new wallpapers or new emojis. Rather, they're crucial bug fixes that help improve the performance of your MacBook. And I know we can get into a huge rabbit hole with Apple slowing down the performance of some of their older products to push consumers to buy some of their newer products. But that is a conversation for a whole nother day. What I'm trying to say is keep your laptop updated and just practice some good digital hygiene. Plus, not to mention some older versions of apps like Safari literally stop working if you don't update your MacBook. So if you don't want the performance of your MacBook to deteriorate, make sure you're not missing out on updates. Mistake number four is gonna be letting your storage get way too full. Now, as a content creator, I've seen this a lot of times. I'll be at like 98% and I need to export like a small B-roll clip and everything will just grind to a halt. Now this goes without saying, but Mac OS needs some room to run, whether it's system processes, background indexing, whatever it may be, these are things that all require temporary space. And when your SSD is nearly full, well, everything just slows down. My rule of thumb is try to always keep at least 10 to 20% of space free. That's about 50 to 100 gigs if you have a 512 gigabyte SSD. So all I'm saying is offload all those old files to iCloud, delete all those school projects from like grade eight, and even use an external SSD if you need to. 
Just don't let your MacBook choke on unnecessary clutter. Mistake number five is gonna be using cheap accessories. So let me ask you guys something. If you guys were to go ahead and buy a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, would you then go ahead to just spend the cheapest gas on it knowing damn well you spent about $300,000 on the car? Hell no, obviously not. So why are you guys using a $10 charger with your $2,000 MacBook? Sketchy accessories tend to overheat, send power to the wrong places, damage your ports, or even short circuit your whole battery. And trust me, I've literally had friends that have got their MacBooks fried because they're using like a $5 charger from Timu. Now, obviously this is not a dig at Timu, but I always love to use the premium accessories on my MacBook. I trust brands such as Apple, obviously, Ugreen, Anchor, Satechi, and there are a bunch more out there. And remember, it's not about the name, it's all about safety and performance. So please avoid using cheap accessories with your MacBook. Now that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about regarding mistakes, but now I want to get into a little bit of a bonus section and I'm going to be breaking down just my personal MacBook maintenance routine. And this will show you exactly how I kept a four to five year old MacBook still running perfectly to this day. So I like to shut my MacBook down at least once a week. Now sleep mode is fine. And to be honest, when it's not shut down, it is in sleep mode, but fully shutting it down helps to clear up some memory and even get rid of some background tasks. Now, yes, I do use Google Chrome on my MacBook as my default search browser. And I know Chrome gets a really bad rep, but I manage my Google Chrome very carefully. I keep my extensions minimal and I literally shut it down when I'm not using it. And I can tell you how many of my friends' MacBooks I've seen where they have old tabs and old tab groups open from like two years ago. And if you don't wanna use Chrome, always remember that Safari will always be lighter, faster, and way easier on the RAM. Every couple of weeks, I also do check my activity monitor. If something is clearly hogging a lot of resources, I just shut it down. And this point is super important. Please clean the screen of your MacBook. I do a quick clean every week or two with a microfiber cloth or alcohol wipes just to keep my Mac looking premium. I also like to use compressed air on the keyboard to get any dust out of there as well. And oh my God, I have seen some genuinely disgraceful looking MacBooks out there. Please don't be one of those people. And of course, I travel a lot with my MacBook, whether it's to school or to work or anywhere else. So I use a proper padded sleeve. Please do not just dump your MacBook in your bag. Scratches are definitely preventable. So all in all, I just wanna say that MacBooks are some of the best laptops out there, but only if you keep it that way. By avoiding some of the mistakes I mentioned in this video, you can get like five to seven extra years on your MacBook. And I'm not even joking. So drop a comment down below which of these mistakes you guys tend to make with your MacBooks. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. I used to make a lot of these mistakes as well until I cleaned up my act. And I also want to know how old is your Mac? Like I'm surprised to see if anybody is still rocking the 2012 Retina MacBook out there. There's got to be at least one person, right? So if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and share this video with somebody that absolutely just abuses their MacBook. And of course, subscribe for more tech, productivity, and lifestyle content. And that being said, it's been your boy Rush. Stay motivated, stay inspired, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.